Devastating news on the recruiting front. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Coming up, we talk about the hire of the offseason, uh, which has changed since we last spoke about this. That'll be with Brian Smith, Locked On Recruiting uh, Insider, as well as writer at AuburnDaily.com. We'll also talk to, uh, talk to him about some of the recruits that he spoke to earlier this week. But first things first, we're dapping it up on a Thursday with Montgomery radio legend Daryl Dapridge just to kind of get a we're recording this really right after the news happened of Ryan Williams recommitting to Alabama. In I didn't buy all of the Bama smoke over the last few days since he visited this past weekend, Daryl. I just didn't buy it. This coaching staff and folks within the program were so confident about all the work that they have done with Ryan Williams, but Hayes Fawcett of On3 drops that graphic, breaking the news that he is committed to Alabama again. I was shocked by this, Daryl. Uh, there's no other way I could put it. It's been kind of a uh, a flip-flop for me. I, I fully expected Ryan Williams to always go to Alabama. I just okay. felt that way uh, when he you know, committed to Alabama early. Uh, and then in the last... 10 days, I started to have a little different feeling about this based upon some legitimate intel, some of which Charlie Five talked about earlier in the week on the show, but some things that we saw that were legitimate and heard from coaches, yeah. from other players, right, that are that were committed with screenshots and that kind of thing. So here's the, here's the situation in something like this. You can get information that's valid but it's up to the, the source or the person telling you or telling other people they're coming to Auburn or they're sure. ready to, to – all that information is legitimate. At the end of the day, though, he's a 16-year-old kid. Ten days ago, was he coming to Auburn? Maybe. It, can he change his mind because of how yes. young he is? Did we all change our minds a lot when we were that age? Absolutely. Was he trolling? Was he loving the attention and the love and all the – playing the game, who knows? It's recruiting. They love that they get a high off this kind of stuff. So I don't know. I think some things changed with the visit last weekend, in my opinion. When he went to Alabama and had a meeting with the board and all that, I think some things changed. But look, just speaking candidly, I felt like all along he was going to Alabama, but it changed for me the last two, 10 days. There was some real smoke there that I was starting to believe he was coming to Auburn. And it was not a gut feeling. It was based yeah. on some things you and I saw. Um, yeah. That changed. It changed. Yeah. It's the way it is in the recruiting game. Yeah, I I thought he was going to Bama until he decommitted. I, I don't know why you would decommit and then go back to, to that school. I, I just thought that was interesting. And so that makes me think that something was there. Something happened. But... Hey, hats off to Kalen DeBoer for getting Ryan Williams back on campus and and getting his commitment again. I mean, props to the staff. I mean, especially for a guy that the biggest knock against him is is he going to be able to recruit? And he comes in and 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 locks down Ryan Williams. I mean, that's that's a big move by Kalen DeBoer. All right, Hugh Freeze, it's your move now. What do you do next? Yeah, there, there's some guys, obviously, the Cade Cunninghams and the, the the Smith kid from Selma from a receiver standpoint. But look, this was a situation where Auburn was always up against it because they were trying to get Ryan Williams away from Alabama. Yeah, You know, it was never a situation where he was going to announce who he was going to be committed to. And it was he was committed to Alabama early on. I'll also say this. What, it, what matters about this or what's perplexing with what you just said about why do you even decommit? It seems like a knee-jerk reaction after Saban retired. But again, we have really good intel, and I feel really confident in saying that Ryan Williams was planning on decommitting and was going to decommit before he even got news of Nick Saban's retirement. Mm. So it's very interesting the way this whole thing you know, played out. Uh, did, did he bond up with the receiving coach like they talked about when he went. I think from a Hugh Free standpoint, yes, you're disappointed. You kind of got in on Ryan Williams late. 
Um, you 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 know you were kind of play catch up. You closed the gap and almost had him. But at the end of the day, you have to just say, okay, this is a kid that wanted to go to Alabama. He was going to Alabama all along. We just go ahead and move on and focus on the Cade Cunninghams and the Smith kid from Selma and really try to make the 2025 class a top five class. And that's how you overcome that. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And look, knowing Hugh Freeze and the staff, they're not going to give up on Ryan Williams before he signs on signing day. Next month, I'm assuming that's what we've seen with every other player that's been committed elsewhere. The staff does not back off of committed players. And so I expect that to that trend to continue with Ryan Williams until he signs his NLI um, early next month. But to me, like at least it's receiver, right? And this is a little bit of copium, I think, but like at least it's at wide receiver, a position group where you feel good about what you did in the 2024 class with all those other four guys signed, the freeze four as it as it sits currently. And so like at least it's that, right? It's, at least it's not some other position group that you you desperately need. You always want a Ryan Williams. There's no question. There's no question about it. you'd prefer to have Ryan Williams than not. And you know we'll we'll see we'll see if this staff does it at the time of us recording this, Daryl. Like we said, we're we're reacting to this pretty raw, but the you know he when he put out his visit schedule, I haven't seen that he's canceled that yet, unless you've seen something differently. Um, and that not. may that may come out and change by the time this drops Thursday morning. We'll see, Daryl. But until that happens, like there's a chance, but. I'm not buying it at this point, like you just said a, a moment ago, but we'll um, we'll see. We'll see how Auburn counters. It would be very strange, but of course, this whole recruiting process with him has been strange. It would be sure. I would be shocked if he still took his Auburn visit. I don't understand the reasoning for that. If you did, I think if he did take his Auburn visit, then there is still a flicker of hope because he hasn't signed yet, and then you get the last visit, and some yeah. things can change. Remember. Kids come off big highs, major buzzes when they go take those visits. So, again, we'll see. But, again, a, a nice consolation prize is a Cam Coleman and a Perry Ty It's going to be fun to watch that group go head-to-head -head with him over the next couple of years. Yeah, and I know you don't mean it this way, but I am going to I am gonna nitpick a little bit. You know, Auburn's 2024 class and where they said it isn't a consolation prize. It kind of feels like that because you lost out on Ryan Williams. I know you don't actually think that, but – no. Like, what what this staff did over the last 12 months to assemble this staff, it is incredible. I mean, this has a chance to be one of the best recruiting classes in Auburn football history. I'll say it again. Without Ryan Williams, this 2024 class still has a chance to be one of the best recruiting classes in Auburn football history. Celebrate the guys that have been steady throughout all of this and celebrate the guys that chose to stick with Auburn. Ryan Williams, we hate that you're not a part of it, but we're going to be happy with the guys that we have. Yeah, more of a play on words there, meaning that I if know, you're going to lose somebody, you have an elite receiver class to, to no look question. at and go, okay, I feel good, right? I feel no good. Question. Yeah, it sucks we lost Ryan Williams, but look what we have over there that we get to watch, like I said, go head to head. And a couple of them that are just absolutely you know, blooming into what, mm -hmm. like a Bryce Kane. So yeah, that's Again, it's if you're going to lose, like you said, on that side of the ball, that's right. the area. So, right, right. All right, uh, Daryl, thank you so much. Daryl will be, uh, he joins us. Uh, obviously, we went live last night to recap Auburn and Alabama, if you want to check that out. And then uh, he'll be on the show tomorrow, as well as we dap it up every single Friday. Coming up, a conversation with our recruiting insider, Brian Smith. He's also a writer at AuburnDaily.com. We recorded this. Wednesday morning, I believe I edited out all of the Ryan Williams conversation. I believe. So we're going to talk about a, a huge hiring move that has already kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit uh, because of the news that happened with Ryan Williams yesterday. But game changer in regards to how Hugh Freeze can build this program moving forward. We touch on that as well as the studs coming out of Enterprise and if Auburn can land those kids. That's coming up right here. Unlocked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. eBay Motors is the best place to buy all of the parts for your car, truck, or SUV. They've got everything you need to maintain your vehicle, level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, whatever, whatever you're into, whether it's speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you 
covered. Over 122 million parts, and with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or die every time, or you get your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep that ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's jump into our conversation with Lockdown Recruiting Insider, Brian Smith. And our recruiting coverage here on the Lockdown Podcast Network brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions apply. Brian, Hugh Freeze. Taking Will Redmond away from LSU, some some places are reporting that Will Redmond's title at Auburn will be just general manager of football. Other articles are saying he is the GM of player personnel, which that probably describes more of what he's going to do for folks unfamiliar with this role. But this is a guy that is widely respected throughout all of college football for what he's done in such a short amount of time, specifically what he did at LSU at the start of the Brian Kelly era. When they were getting started there, they had less than 40 players on their roster. Insane. Which is, again, this is LSU. It's not exactly the most difficult place to get players. So yeah. for them to turn it around like they did in like six months, because they were good in 22 and then 23, obviously they had some defensive issues, but I mean, their roster is way better than we thought. Transfers, obviously, Jaden Daniels, he was a big part of going after him, and they had the right fits at a lot of spots, offensive line, et cetera, nobody expected. He found a way for them to be competitive. They beat Bama last year. Uh, this won, season. Yeah, I mean, I they mean, won the SEC West. Yeah. His so first year there, yeah. Nobody, when they first got there, nobody thought they were winning the SEC West, other than the people in Baton Rouge. So mm -hmm. he was a major part of it. And what does this mean? Well, it means that. Brian Kelly can actually coach instead of jacking around with the roster all day, which he would have been. Right. And he had to get his staff in line, get recruiting in line. So that was a big part of it. Now that same thing comes to Auburn and they're a year in. So they got some of their stuff out of the way, sure. but I'm sure that you freeze. He, he likes to be a play caller. He likes to be on the offense, all that kind of stuff gives him a chance to be you freeze and not worry about just assimilating Auburn's roster. It's a big, big helping off of his plate and the rest of the Auburn staff for that matter. Yeah, it was pretty telling when Brian Kelly got to Baton Rouge and chose to retain him. And obviously that was the right decision because they flipped the roster almost immediately. Redmond was a huge, huge part of that. And Brian, one of the biggest debates internally throughout the Auburn fan base during Hugh Freeze's first year at Auburn was, okay, well, what's the proper balance here? Because clearly we need Hugh Freeze to be a part of the game plan regarding the offense and the play calling on Saturdays. And all that because it was a noticeable difference when he was involved versus when he wasn't. But also, you don't get this class that you got in 2024 without Hugh Freeze putting his efforts there. I think bringing in a Will Redmond allows him to not have to focus as much time on off the field type things as far as roster construction and rating players on a big board, at both transfers and high school kids. Hugh Freeze is still going to be involved with all that, as he should. He's the head coach. But for the fan that wants Hugh Freeze to call plays more, which is most Auburn fans, this is a huge, huge move. Sure, it's an off-the-field role. It's not one of the guys who's going to be out there hitting the road recruiting. But this is the type of hire that you need that makes your program better. It's not super flashy, but Auburn football got better with this hire. This is the guy that also makes sure the guys that do hit the road go to the right places, meet the right people, see the sure. right recruits. Uh, one of the, my favorite phrases of all time is, it doesn't matter how fast you are if you don't know where you're going. And that's Deep. really what this is. Mm -hmm. General managers got to make sure everybody's going to the right place. So the roster is going to change in college football with all these weird transfer rules. Like, you know, you transfer as many times as you want. If you're not ahead of the game and don't already have a list at every spot, almost like coaches have lists for assistants leaving and coming, now it's their whole roster. you got to know everybody's roster. It's insane. Mm -hmm. This is the new most important position in all of college athletics because if you're not winning in football, you're not spending money properly and gaining money. you got to win in football to have an athletic budget. And in Auburn, obviously, you know, is better than about anybody living there your whole life. 
Right. This is a football school. This is how you get to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Auburn did a great job, and now they're going to reap the benefits for years to come. It's also, yeah, just a sign of, okay, this is what, you know, a new era of college football looks like with rosters being so fluid. I was asked about this on the radio yesterday. It's like, I hadn't really heard of this that much. And it's like, well, it, you know, this is new. I mean, coaching staffs and universities and athletic departments, they're adjusting to these new rules as well. And now there are jobs and duties that need to be assigned that weren't as prevalent as they were a year ago. Now you can have a guy, I mean, we're seeing this now, guys who sign in December that are entering the portal because of coaching changes. I mean, it's insane. It's insane how fluid everything is. And if the NCAA doesn't do anything about you know that second free transfer, I mean, it's just going to get worse. And so you've got to have a guy that is able to keep track of all this because it's too much stress on these head coaches. Props to Hugh Freeze for not only going out and getting somebody, but this is a home run move that's not going to show up in the box score, it's not going to show up necessarily as, you know, this guy's the lead recruiter for this four or five star. But once again, I cannot stress enough. No hire this offseason will impact Hugh Freeze more in a positive way than this one. I couldn't agree more. And now all his guys that he's hiring at different spots to do different things from trainers, assistant coaches, actually do their job. Yeah. Uh, roster management. It's gotten to the point. It's just insane. You and I, how many times did we text during the month of December about the portal? 80? I mean, Non-stop. it was just, it's yeah. just, and that's for every school. It's it's not what you or anybody else for that matter signed up for, but that's where they're at. So to get them back into being hired for what they were hired to do, guys like this, I mean, I don't know if Will Redmond even knows how valuable he is. And I'm curious to see where the salaries for these guys go because the teams that win, I'll guarantee over the next five years, they don't necessarily have to have somebody as good as Will, but they got to have somebody pretty darn good. Or even in like Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, yeah. they'll go down in a lot because you lose one key transfer and you don't have an answer for it. Somebody else ought to grab the guy that you needed. That could be the difference between winning and losing the SEC. Yeah, it's important. It's important. And uh, it seems like he's got an Auburn tie. It sounds like he wanted to be at Auburn, the article that uh, that broke the news uh, via football scoop talked about how he's got a former uh, NCAA champion with um with somebody who had a career on um, Auburn's campus, and so I mean he's he's related to Auburn. He's been around Auburn. This is a guy who wants to be a part of Auburn, which is huge. So I, I think this is big for Will. I'm sure he got a big raise out of this. Sure. I think it's huge for Hugh Freeze. I think it's huge for for Auburn football. So props to Hugh Freeze for pulling this off. And, and in fact. There was one of the tweets. Um, oh, no, it's a headline from Football Scoop. The The headline is Auburn executes major coup. NAB's yeah. top executive, Will Redman from LSU. I mean, that's just, this is a nationally big thing. Football Scoop named him the football, uh, football scoop director of player personnel of the year a year ago. So, I mean, nationally respected for folks that monitor this industry in that specific role. Cannot stress how huge of a deal this is so there's that i'm hoping that uh we see some pretty quick benefits and i have a feeling we will with some of the kids we're getting ready to talk about yeah i think so i think so all right you spoke to zion grady and eric winters down in enterprise alabama what can we expect from those guys moving forward we discuss in just a moment right here on locked on auburn is a crew thursday brian smith locked on recruiting insider as well as auburn daily recruiting Ryder, all right, you you went down to Enterprise. Let's start with Zion Grady, the four-star edge rusher. We'll see how Auburn labels that position whenever they do get their new defensive coordinator, if they still call it Jack, if they go back to calling an edge, we'll see. But this is a guy that um, was committed to Alabama, decommitted, and Auburn is uh, is hot for this guy as well as several other teams. Every team in the Southeast wants Zion Grady. He has a chance to end up finishing this cycle as a five-star, uh, very long limb kid, 6'4", 225. I, I went and saw Coach Blackman at Enterprise. It's one of the better programs in the state of Alabama, as I'm sure many on this show know. And it's a team that has another guy, Eric Winters, we'll talk about in a second. But with this yeah. kid, he can play off-ball linebacker, even though he's really long, dropping to space. Blackman went on and on about how he's a kid that just wants to work. He's not going to be complaining no matter what he does. He's a tremendous pass rusher, though. They're just high school kids aren't going to stay in front of him. 
Mm-hmm. And that's why, like when I got to the high school to see coach Blackman, Kirby had just left flown off on the helicopter. So, I mean, that's look, I mean, Kirby doesn't just fly around randomly in South Alabama. There's a reason that he's there. So mm-hmm. Auburn had just hosted him, they, him and, and winners here recently. And his recruitment went from, I'm just going to Alabama because of Saban to just wide open. Blackman made a very concerted effort to bring that up. Yeah. Auburn, Georgia, I think will be, Two very important ones. Florida State is another. Keep those names in mind. It's kind of the same with winners, but he's just like taking it in, and he has an offer from every school in the country. He'll be a fifty offer kid. Yeah. So yeah. great. Player. He's he's worthy of it, deserving of it for sure. Six four, two ten. I mean, you talk about long. You talk about length. He's got a frame. It looks like where he can pack on more size too. But just at the high school level, man, with, with those long arms, at that with that frame. Yeah. You can get on the edge and you fully extend that arm and get that much separation. Like that's just going to be a problem. Yeah, there's like I said, high school kids. There's probably not ten in the country they're going to have much success at all against him. He's too fast, mm. and then you can't get your hands into his body. And that this this things you can't you can't teach. He's the guy that's going to win the measurables battle when he goes to Under Armour and all that. I can't wait to see him there in the one on ones with linemen when he actually. I, I, Micah DeBose, a kid that Auburn is hot and heavy for down in the Mobile area. When those guys go one-on-one at Under Armour, I want to see that because that's one of five guys maybe in the country that has a really good chance to compete against him. But if you can get those kids now with the – like the receiver was the big thing this past class. Edge rushers this year is going to be a big thing for Auburn to get one or two of those guys. They already got the D-tackles. I mean, my gosh, Auburn's D-line class is really good there. If they get they could add Grady, it would be the best D-line class in the country. Yeah, it'd be insane no for sure. So looking at the timeline of this, he visits Auburn and then he de- – so that was on the 13th of January. A few days later is when he decommits from Alabama. Then, as you mentioned, he, he gets visited by, by the Georgia staff shortly after that. It's hard not to read too into the timeline of this, but right. if you're Auburn, you've got to like the fact that he visited you and then decommits to your rival a few days later. Yeah, I mean, the the proof is in the pudding. Don't don't over-examine this. He is going to be a kid that Auburn's in with. You yeah. don't just visit and then just, oh, I'm going to decommit from your arch rival. Yeah, come on. We, we can mm-hmm. put it into, into that sense. But here's the other part. He would sure. not have taken that visit to Auburn if they hadn't been working him prior to Nick stepping down. Totally. This is part of the recruiting that people don't hear about. Mm-hmm. Recruiting is endless. Every single day, there is a piece of mail, a phone call to the mom or to his coach. Totally. Something. Right. And that's something that Blackman talked to me about when we're sitting in his office. He's like, you know, Auburn's putting in the work here. Right? Winners, too. We'll talk about in a second, but like they're putting in the work. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between winning and losing with five star kids, man, because he can go wherever he wants. There's not a school in the country that would not take his commitment. So, yeah. so, so that's that that's Zion Grady, the four-star edge. Let's pivot to the four-star safety. Eric Winters, 6'2, 195. And you and I've talked about Eric Winters maybe two weeks or so ago. Um, mm-hmm. Auburn is expected to land this kid. Auburn appears to be the clear favorite. Ole Miss, I think, is trying to do their best to position themselves with giving themselves a chance there as well. But what are you hearing regarding Eric Winters, the four-star safety? The school that is really picking it up is actually Georgia. Uh, okay. Kirby really likes him. Uh, obviously, Kirby's a defensive-minded guy. And here's the question. Even Coach Blackman said this. Eric needs to figure out which position he wants to play. He said he could be a nickel, a safety, or a will linebacker. He goes, he's as rare as it gets. He said for them, he played a lot of quarterback just because he makes so many plays. And next year, they might even play him at receiver and running back. Some. He's, he's a wow. really rare kid. So. Yeah. Kirby wants those guys too. Those chess pieces that you can move around for, you know, blitzing and all the different things that he does with his three, four with Auburn. I think he would be the nickel and I think they would blitz him a lot. He's a very explosive off the edge, Georgia and Auburn look for those Florida state Ole Miss may be on the outside, but those are the teams, but Auburn's been trending the most Blackman doesn't necessarily disagree with that. It's just Georgia's coming after him now. Like they're they're concertedly making that effort. So I'm curious to see if Eric makes another visit there, how it goes when he goes to, to Athens. That that's really important. Yeah. The on three industry rating that supposedly compiles all of the all of the different ratings. They have Zion Grady as the number three player in the state of Alabama. They have Eric Winters as the number nine player 
in the state of Alabama. So obviously getting both of these guys would be huge. I mean, it'd be crucial for the, you know, especially with the timing of, okay, the 2025 class for Auburn is trending. Also, Nick Saban's no longer in Tuscaloosa. So it kind of feels like there's a sense, there's a window of when you could really capitalize on this, which is why I think the 2025 class is so big. So, I mean, if you could get two of these guys that are top 10 players in your state that happen to be teammates already, I, I think that would optically, it would look huge. Then obviously, as far as building a class, it'd be huge as well. The other nice little bonus is they live right down the road from Mr. Henderson, uh, the running back. That, Alvin, yeah, yeah. That's it's interesting. Like they're they're in an area that doesn't have a ton of players, but I you know, there's another. I forget which one's two four seven arrivals where it has winners like number four in the state. Thank you so much to Daryl. Thank you so much to Brian for hanging out for a few minutes. Weird episode because I had to chop a few uh, pieces together due to that news, but. Thank you guys for sticking through it. Thank you guys for checking out everything that's going on at Locked on Auburn. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.